Okay. So, hello and welcome to this TV show of today. Basically, I made it. This is for me. I'll start that. I'll start again. Hello to me, my future self, uh, and I'll just talk to myself. I think that's easier. I know. I know what I mean. Um, okay. So, when I was in South Africa, I finished making. A TV show, uh, video tutorials, Manor, the Ubuntu Living Show, youtube.com forward slash Ubuntu Living gives you a bunch of different raw food, vegan food prep classes and other uh, ecological living classes. It was all about how to work with nature to provide what we need in abundance and for free rather than competing against each other for money and then using the money to buy what we need. We just work out how to provide everything we need ourselves by working with nature, which is of course an abundant free supply. Sunshine every day comes up really punctually, always on time, very diligent worker. Air free and the water falls for free out of the sky. Um, and you're on the ground already, like you just, whoa, it's always there. You can like jump and it comes back. Um, so, and we got a lot of space. We got a lot of space. Enough for the global population to fit in the area of France with a thousand square feet around each person. Take eight billion, divide it by their square footage or square meterage of France, uh, which is about the same size as Texas, and you will get a thousand square feet around each individual human being. This is very good because a thousand square feet is enough to create a forest garden, a food forest, an overyielding that means lots too much, an overyielding polyculture with self renewing fertility, which means the leaves and the berries and fruit and veg that you can't eat fall to the ground, they rot, they make soil, the funguses break down all that, and the inorganic compounds underneath. and all your poop and everything goes into the soil and all the poop of all the other friendly pigs and sheep and all the other guys helping you forest garden that um, make the soil that soil is the food for the plants the plants grow strong they make the oxygen for you they make the food for you and you spread their seeds out you can actually work in such a way with the plants that you're not hurting them you're working with their business model just as your outward breath is their inward breath remember to breathe then you have their, uh, uh, their, their progeny, their produce. Uh, the, the, the vegetables have the seeds inside. They become ripe for eating. When the seeds are ripe for planting, you eat the vegetables, poop out the seeds, and the plants grow. And that kind of companionship, that symbiosis with the plant kingdom, is the foundation of, hu of, of human culture. Without it, this is the foundation of all life, uh, mammalian life on the planet. But like, um, it is part of a connected web. When we rely on animal husbandry, uh, which was the focus of our last show, if this is indeed going to be a show, I'll just show you around this beautiful English countryside. I'll show you all the good stuff I know continually. Anyway, we have. Um, uh, 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 with plant-based symbiosis we can create a lot of biodiversity which is biosecurity and uh, a much easier to produce much higher higher yielding uh, uh, stuff in a smaller space basically you need a lot more space thousands of percent more water doing animal agriculture animal agriculture okay just bear in mind the fact people aren't growing their own anyway they're relying on intensive forms of agriculture so um, if you want to have uh, pigs and and bacon and uh, all this meat in our diet, that's going to be produced 99, well, less than 8% of all the stuff is raised on a pasture. So the rest is going to be intensively raised. So 8% of your meat, if you're buying meat in the shops and stuff, is, uh, is going to be from pasture-raised stuff. The rest is going to be intensively produced. Now that is the number one driver of deforestation, the number one consumer and polluter of fresh water, the number one driver of biodiversity loss, the number one cause of ocean acidification and dead zones in the ocean because you're allowed four times as much NPK which is nitrogen potassium and phosphorus the fertilizers that go on plants for animal consumption as you are for plants for human consumption so plants for animal consumption are allowed to be sprayed with four times more 
pesticides, herbicides, fungicides, larvicides in this war against nature, establishing giant monocultures, soya bean crops, where the forest used to be. What is the main crop in the Amazon rainforest? Soybean. Why is it cut and cleared? Is to grow soybean for not humans, for livestock. Ruminants that aren't even designed to eat so soybeans. They're ruminants. They're going to eat the grass and they ferment it in their four tummies and make the cow for their babies who are taken away from their mothers before they can suckle on their tits. The boys are um, uh, destroyed and turned into veal and stuff like that. Their pasteurized blood is fed to the baby girls because the baby milk is being fed to you, which doesn't have four stomachs and is dying from all the multiple sclerosis, heart diseases, etc. Diseases of excess and lifestyle, like heart disease and cancers, trophoblast cell appears and deficient and, and um, toxic environments. And trophoblast cell is cancer though. Get, get, get with the theory, um, uh, the trophoblastic thesis of cancer and start seeing how trophoblast cell comes into being. We are reports that we do for government on the connection between our diet and, and health, lifestyle. We, we had conferences at the, the Houses of Parliament with World Preservation Foundation and all these amazing scientists from all over the world who are now being offered hundreds of millions from uh, Google for their veggie burgers because of this. Uh, Professor Pat Brown has just got offered 300 million from, from Google. Anyway, this is a slightly rambling rant, but you can see the constant thread that if we live with this culture of compassion and establish a symbiosis with the other beings that want us to eat their stuff, and we do not eat the things that would run away and try and stop us from killing them, just that do unto others as you would have done unto yourself. We see this great natural healthy abundance, high, far more efficient, far more delicious, far healthier, longer living, more desirable, more yummy, cuddly, happy piggies. And she pulling you along your skateboard on the way to your shell-shaped levitating, uh, floating, um, uh, you know, castle in the clouds man where your gardens are all going on that may seem a little bit much the last bit but bear with me and you shall see our sky lifters and you can come and ride them uh helium airships you can see the e-cats you can see cold fusion happening you can see the harvard physics professors going i'm not gonna read this bullshit and then they're like i will write your business plan what the fuck is this this is the best physics i've ever read on the subject it's time now it's happening so by this culture of compassion, by doing unto others as we could have done unto ourselves, still the fundamental stuff we've been struggling with for quite a while, <laughs> then we can, uh, then we can just rant at each other on the eBay. No, we can get down in the garden and we can establish a culture based on doing to each other what we'd have done unto ourselves, based on compassion. The simple, simple, just bit there. So I think what's in the way of that happening, and I will suggest my way to make it happen as well, with Green Camp, I won't just highlight all these problems, I'm getting to our, um, our solution. This is so much fun and it's working. Okay, so, I think just first of all, it's important to bear in mind what, even though, you know, the solution is simple, do unto others as you'd have done unto yourself, you know. You don't kill and maim and eat their faces because I really wouldn't want someone to do that to me. And I'm pretty sure we are all the same in that we want to be free from suffering and happy. So, the thing I reckon is this pattern of energy, like an addictive energy, like meat eaters, uh, uh, former shadow economic secretary and Bristol MP Caroline uh, we're on first name terms she did the foreword to our paper which got sent to every single GP in the country check out worldpreservationfoundation.org forward slash downloads anyway that's some good karma right there man that has won me community with some of the most powerful beings on the planet okay anyway we're all a community with each other. We just gotta love each other and then there's no choice. We just, you know, if you can do something useful and you're really, really trying to help each other, then, you know, it's the most valuable thing there is anyway, so everyone will invest in it. Okay, I, I digress. So, what we go on, what we got to do is get this um, pattern of energy, this addictive energy, you see, 
Caroline M uh, Caroline from uh, MP from Bristol she says meat eaters are like drug addicts yeah uh, that's the same kind of thing and, and they're like smokers we have to treat them the same they're causing we can see from all the data we presented in that report we can see it's the largest ever studies of ever, any kind ever done the China study like shows the connection between heart disease degenerative disease and uh, your diet, eating livestock products, not eating them, a raw food, plant-based diet is what the human body is designed to eat, like, it's what their study showed, it was just, you know, 30,000 people over 30 years, like, looking at all the different ways that they died and what their diets were going on, and uh, China's one of the few places where you can really lock people down and, like, feed them just one control group or something, so, um, uh, sorry my Chinese guys, but you know that you're the force for good in the world. Um, uh, the opportunity for the great is good. And, uh, uh, okay, so, um, these addictive patterns where you know you're doing something wrong, but it's like just got so much momentum that it's just like difficult to change. I don't know if you've ever been addicted to crack or not, but when you're cracking, you're like, ouch, that's really painful. Ouch, I don't want to do that. Oh, but it's, it, like I've had a friend who's been raped and had her uh, uh, wrist slit by the Satanist police guys in San Francisco and like the, the all those dark side people in control of the political system in America and uh, her face stabbed and stuff and she was being raped and over and over and they left her to die and like make it look like she killed herself and she didn't die she survived and she said that is nothing. Heroin addiction is much worse. And we treat them like criminals. They're like massively sick people. And that's what we've got. We've got people like running around stealing shit off each other, fighting like for land, for resources and stuff. But it's a sickness. They, they, they like, I like with the trophoblastic theory of cancer, there's deficiency. There is not enough ingredients. There's not enough nutrition, minerals, the actual letters of the alphabet that your body needs to start completing whole sentences where it can say, you imagine you take letters out of the alphabet and you start talking to somebody like, I can't, I, I, you, know, you wouldn't understand what they were saying, right? So in our culture, we have these big ingredients missing from our alphabet. Compassion at, at, at school, teaching children how to be kind to animals, how to connect with their heart base, how to like understand how to create an overyielding polyculture with self-renewing fertility, how to produce their own home out of the ground and the wood that grows in abundance all around them. These ingredients in us self-sustaining by working with nature are missing from our from our our, our psycho-spiritual. Uh, forget spiritual word, too many loaded that we live in the soul um, uh, uh, from our fucking culture. Okay, so we, um, excuse my French, poor French people, they speak so nicely. Like, anyway, okay, so um, there's that big momentum, and there's not an alternative, you know, it's like. I just don't really know what to do. It's overwhelming. It's like, well, if I don't do that, what do I do? Uh, you know, there's nowhere else to really go. Like, and uh, yeah, so I think that's the kind of situation with the, with the culture. Is that so? Sort the of education is at the is at the heart of the solution. And um, and there's nothing that you need to educate that isn't already within you. The the heart knows. It's like billion, trillion, squajillion, forever years of eternal evolution that this universe has been knowing itself. And it, and it's, it's a, so your heart is 9,000 times more powerful than the brain electromagnetically. So the heart sends a lot more information to the brain as in formations of energy, patterns, waveforms, which is all information is. And your heart is sending 9,000 times more to the brain than the other way around. The stomach is sending more. You've got more nerve endings in your stomach than in your brain. And all the little bacteria and stuff in there go in the science museum. they got a whole big section on that now. Um, uh, yeah, I write my science letters in the cafe at the back there. It's free. Britain's museums are heavenly and so are the li libraries. Um, okay, so are New York's. 
uh, or harmonic geometry. Uh, yeah, really good for focusing um, and writing out this stuff, man. So into business plans for us to live out. Um, okay, so 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 uh, this this addictive pattern of energy. The meditation is the thing that just tunes you back into your heart, and the heart already knows what it wants, it, what it would want done to it. You go like, oh well, you know, what, what does that feel right? And it's felt being in the body, not in the head, your heady thing, which is good for learning the names of things and and all that kind of um, gubbins. But like, um, the heart is gonna feel like it would it feel right. Like this is my personal take on it, and I, I, I from what I understand from what the Buddhist guys are teaching. So, um, yeah. That's, that's what you do, you meditate, and then when you really get into the feeling of the heart, and not just in the head repeating patterns unconsciously, you're really feeling, does that feel right? And if it doesn't feel right, I wouldn't want that done to me. You don't do it to others. You have to go really deep, and it's like, well, you know, I don't really feel right driving a car over this black, like, tarmac, that's like all the other animals that walk across it, is like, they're gonna get fucking murked. It looks a bit like a vein in a body. It's kind of like an organic thing. We're a bit like cells floating through a through a um, through a, a body. You know, when I look at that, that's kind of holofractographic. That's a that's a kind of a, 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 a symmetry with nature, and um, uh, and and so you know maybe, but. It's still like, I wouldn't want that done to me if I was a beautiful like ecosystem of someone just put a big black road through and or all these cars in there, we're like digging into the earth like a virus like digs into the host and a fungus like drills out and pulls out the nutrients and in a tree, fungus can be like saprophytic and, and protective of the tree even, stop other funguses from coming in and doing their thing. But like other times it can become parasitic and it can, uh, um, uh, uh, you know, destroy the host, and there's a careful balance that needs to come into play, and it can rely on different strata of saprophytic funguses so that the right kind of endophytic fungus can get into the roots of that's not really I think uh, possible endophytic fungus will, will grow endo into the uh, into the roots and uh, then it breaks down the organic compounds and feeds them to the host and even if you cover the tree the fungus will join with the other trees and take sugars from those trees and feed it they're like one organism joined together by this mind the fungus underneath um, avatar is all based on that stuff and Captain uh, Captain Paul Stamets. Captain Paul Watson of the Sea Shepherds is on our team. Ho! But Captain Paul Watson of uh, you know Fungi Perfecti, uh, Fungi.com, like uh, mycelium running, how mushrooms will save the world. He's on the team too. He's like, okay, let's try and do this Navi camp as it was originally with James Cameron, but we're gonna do the green camp. So anyhow, we're doing our meditation. We're trying to tune into our heart. We're like, these roads are a bit, you know, like what? So I'm like electrostatic levitation with self-sustaining life support systems on board. Who else was doing that? Nikolai Tesla? Oh, we're making a film with Gary Oldman about him now. Ha! Ha! Mother Nature's just sending us buoyantly into the clouds. Oh my God, the most beautiful people involved. Uh, Jake Sully, Ruben Langdon, most powerful CG pipeline in Hollywood. Um, thank you, Simone Lombardo. Welcome to the motorway as we drive past Guildford on our way up to London from Arundel Green Camp. Um, so, uh, what was I saying? What was I saying? Uh, movies! Uh, <laughs> I was. Uh, I was saying, yeah, you know, so this road thing, it doesn't feel right. What does feel right? What does feel right? If, well, maybe if I had my geodesic dome with a self-sustaining life support system, so I have my hydroponic vegetable production system over there, and a way that it harvests and then recycles the water, and, and you know, so it's like food is produced on board, and, and, you know, it's made out of some kind of, maybe we could make it out of a ceramic that comes from salt water, there's lots of salt water, or we could make space balloons and retrieve the asteroids, because with the helium space balloon you could follow the electromagnetic aurora to the pole and pop out of the earth's atmosphere without the need for all those combustible engines because i don't know about you but if i was a planet i wouldn't want people just coming coming away and if i was an astronaut i wouldn't rather i'd rather sit on the balloon and float gently out into the stratosphere and the magnetosphere than i would uh sit on a bloody rocket that 
blows up with all the other lemon holding astronauts on board because the secret space program won't give us what the patent holding offices keep from us for security interest because you won't give a technology that allows your enemy to have an unlimited t uh, tank range you won't give it to them uh, <laughs> <laughs> you won't say, here is how your tank can last forever and charge your positronic longitudinal scalar weaponry to reverse target anything you like on our side. You won't do that. You won't do that at all. What you'll do is try and keep anyone from finding out what you know. Because as long as you know it and they don't, then you're okay. So that's why it's a secrecy paradigm. And it's a fear-based paradigm because you're afraid of them. Because you haven't got the minerals. You haven't been tuning into your own heart, my brew. You don't get how much more desirable it is. And I don't care how much more realistic your Hobbesian, cruel, brutish and short life is. We are eternal. And your children will grow up in a world characterized by this reflection. Check out Tomorrowland, a wonderful allegory about how we create the disaster that we are seeking to avert by, obs by observing as the quantum experimental uh, uh, observation principle, observation problem for gravitational model physicists. Um, not a problem for electric, uh, electric model of the universe physicists. I may, uh, or, okay, sorry, okay, so, we, the mind in which you seek is the mind in which you create, in the connect, uh, the act of looking and observing will affect what you're seeing, so, as you go around there, well, uh, I, uh, tribal paranoia, we need armies, you can't not have an army, how foolish you are, my stepfather says, ah, you moron, you do not know, we need an army, otherwise they will kill you and take away all your money from slavery and Nazi party, ooh, ooh, ooh. no, no, you need to be an army, ah, you idiot, okay, you can see there's a little bit of angst in me about that one, but, he, <laughs> he, uh, uh, then I say, but what about Costa Rica? They got rid of their army. Costa Rica, did you, hmm? They got rid of their army? No. No, no, it's not possible. Let me see in the Telegraph. It's not in the Telegraph. Let me see in the Economist. No, it's not in the Economist. Well, it can't be true. You are a liar. You are, you are, no, I would not bet on you if you were a horse. It's like, I'm not a horse and you don't have to bet on me. I've already won because I'm doing what I love and I will die and I will lose ultimately everything that I have but it will be like it's an it, I am not here it is already all here it's an eternal love that is manifest there's only love and not knowing it there's this 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 divine playground like schoolroom, classroom for experiencing and, and knowing and, and it's all within the greatest arms of compassion that they can die, that they can, that we can die, that we can, uh, so that there's new life can come forth and change can happen. There can't be a beginning without an end. Okay, okay, so I didn't really, really get to the globalists who, well, fuck the globalists, globalists are awesome, Alex Jones, mate, and they're communists! It's like, you can't have communism without democracy, and you can't have democracy without communism. You, Pats, not even Patsy, they're just using words from those kind of films. You are Operation Mockingbird, and talk about that one for a second, my bro. Like, you're just, just fueling the device, the device in this. Um, uh, okay, so how about we do a little bit with these guys if we stop competing and reorganize ourselves into a cooperative paradigm? I'm pretty sure those guys are so high on drugs and power, like the families I see around me, so deeply ingrained in their pain bodies, and they just unconsciously have to keep keeping the suffering and pain alive to keep their idea of themselves alive. 
There's no spiritual practice, there's no meditation where they're tuning into their heart and just really letting it all kind of dissipate, all that negative pattern, there's none of that. There's just like, me, 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 keep me alive, I have to survive, me, me, me. There's no facing their, their mortality, facing nature, the nature of things, and just this idea that there's some fix themselves there, this selfish thing, okay? So like, for those guys, the challenge, a cooperative ownership with democratic principles and then if you're, you you can see the thing that says no I'm much better positioned to be in charge of this or like we've been doing this for a long time um, so check out your family history and see how much inbreeding there is there and then see maybe why you are a little bit psychopathic and honestly see if inbreeding is not known to create hectically like clinging to the power structure of your family sort of uh, obsessiveness um, I know about obsessiveness um, uh, it's, it's, it's like you know but I just need to breathe and to know that I can make my children in a land which is if I die that it belongs to them um, it doesn't belong to them they belong to it that's the whole point is that they can still belong and this ownership paradigm is mine, mine. Watch your two-year-old reflect what's going on around them. Mine, mine. Like that's what's going on on a deep level. That's one of the first things they pick up on and obsess about, man. Like mine, mine. Like this, this, like what is this fervent obsession? Like little Eve is just like mine. It's just like tuning into that psychic energy that's going on all around us. It's, it, and where is that? It's from no real having any identity of self whatsoever, like clinging, grasping to whatever we can. Oh. Okay, okay, that's the problem. That's the problem. So solution, shared ownership of land with a principle of harmlessness. Done. Democratic decision making. Done. That's, that's it. Cooperatives. Decide on anything. Who's the board of people? Who's the accountant? Starts being shit. Everyone says, shit, we're holding a meeting, they come together, the directors don't turn up when they're given a week's notice, they have directorial power. The principle is of harmlessness. You're not doing that to anyone that you wouldn't want done to yourself. So, basically, unless we're all sitting under trees banging out the Dharma, people can be like, no man, like this isn't what it's about. And you've got to have some beings who are like really up for it, and you don't get this paradigm, you don't get like the, the, the service of others, without getting this paradigm done on an individual level. There's no blaming anyone else for this shit. This is our fault. This is my fault. I am driving on the roads. I am paying them road tax. I am not flying in my own electrostatic levitation or helium skylifter airship right now. Like, because of my own laziness and my own negative habits. I use the slavery bills with the, the, the Queen Lizzie's head on it and I support reptilian functions all day long. I perpetuate that dimension and the frequency control that, indoor, that, that, that is going on around it. So it's my fault and I also choose that, right, no, I'm not going to do that anymore. I'm going to stay in my forest garden, I'm going to build structures and a social franchise that allows for this communal land ownership to happen. I have to decide to do that and then I can make it possible for someone else. I can't tell anyone else what to do until I've done it for myself. So that's what Green Camp is about. I'm like, okay, I can do it for myself, for my family, if other people want to get involved. Yes, that's the most valuable thing that I can have is other groups of people working with this principle of Ahimsa. It makes what I can do in one day in the forest garden, I can do in half a day with two people. I can do what I can do in six days in the forest garden in one day with six people. Like, it makes it so much easier. Actually, forest gardens, you need about 20 days of work a year and they produce so much food, I never need to go to the shops again. Come and get membership in the garden, do the vegan permaculture design curriculum. Learn about it. Come grow the forest garden. Okay, okay. Okay, okay, okay. So, uh, my mum just telephoned me. Tell me where the things are. It's just too late now. Um, okay, so, yeah. We keep having the drum circles. We keep doing the dancing. We keep doing 
the supper clubs learning how to grow our sprouts and things inside uh, on our windowsills in our little veggie gardens learning at the vegan permaculture course how to grow stuff lots of stuff enough everything that we need outside of our homes very very easily not like we need to do that much more and then we come down and we have these festivals where we dance the dancers we make the music and we, we order in lots of trees we plant more food forest and we build more domes at the natural build courses and round houses and when we come back next year the trees are a bit bigger there's more food on them and there's a few more round houses and we come back next year and we can just nomadically go from place to place and when you come to a garden you can lap in you can work in work through the backlog which the community participatory forum is working through fanciful okay the difficult thing is working with the other people people all over the place i want to do my own thing you know i want to do this i want to do that you know and it's like well you selfish motherfucker why don't you do what's best for all beings everywhere and always Maybe that's a selfish for me for me to say, no doubt, but um, and I respect my brother's journey. I'm just trying to illustrate a point. Like, we're not at that point yet in our own, okay, I want to do what's best for all beings. Even though it may, I would argue, be the most fun thing that you can do. Um, so that's the model that we're working into being. I got the best help in the universe. Prince Charles' sustainability unit is helping us find land so we can do the hemp farming which will subsidise the green camp. We got Business Park, we got Department of Trade and Investments who is helping us up. I went to Goodwood, I hopefully we can still land the Skylifter like dome which makes the Skylifters these big flying saucer helium airships. We can pick up a huge hospital, drop it anywhere, pick up a huge hydroponic farm, drop it anywhere, pick up a green camp and put, pop it anywhere to help us get started with this regenerative social franchise. Like, that's a bit of a oversimplification, but um, it'll do. Uh, the, uh, the sort of uh, community centre dome tree, which we, we developed, is a, a vertical garden and allows for all the main aspects of the community stuff to happen. So you can do your yoga and your market days and your movie nights and your theatre and your first floor on the bottom floor and your bathrooms where the homeless people can come and have a good old screwing and. Um, uh, showers and toilets and the first floor for yoga and workshops and the next floor for like domiciliary sleeping and pods like that and then up the into the office levels and then on the top there's like a ceremonial thing you could even land a sky lifter there but I think it's highly impracticable anyway um, uh, but it would be fun uh, and then um, um, ECAP outside cold fusion bomb there's a lot of power going on in that one Okay, and where was I? Okay, so we got that model. We're working to set it up. I got invitations to do it in Poland. I got policemen monitoring our speed on the bridge. That's nice of them. I'm going the right speed. And, um, yeah. So, so what? So what now? So what now are we going to do? Now I just want to tell you all about it. I want to tell me so when I'm an old guy I can be like this is what I'm doing um I love y'all we got so much fun stuff happening oh my god movie about Nikola Tesla Gary Oldman's kind of skirting around I'm not really allowed to talk about that but I'm not sure a lot of people are really gonna watch this so it doesn't matter it does not matter and then we got the ECAT after year-long test. It's going to be ready in February. So I think I'm going to take Elon Musk and Richard Branson and James Cameron to be like, oh, ECAT's in the middle of the green camp so that we can get the community centre all subsidised by the cleanest energy that's ever been known. It's like the new fire. It takes hydrogen and nickel and in a cold fusion reaction with a catalyst frequency makes copper. And just a little bit or less energy then a, but um, well the energy density is, uh, power density is a bit less than the uh, nuclear energy, uh, traditional nuclear energy, and then, uh, but the power density, energy density, yeah, is way higher, uh, and there's no radioactive isotopes. Great success! <laughs> Great! Uh, and although I haven't seen it for myself, some of my friends have seen it. And what I'll say is get one of those, stick it in, and do a world Tesla wireless power uh, transmission through the earth using harmonic resonance, non-destructive harmonic resonance. 
which I think it all will have to be if it's going through the earth anyway, it has to be tuned into the the earth and the mind are all tuned into the same frequencies. So if we did do electrostatic levitation, this is where it gets fun. Otis T's cars, uh, Otis T car was Nikola Tesla's student and they were working on the craft together. And so you get super high voltage electrostatic levitation, which is all in a harmonic with what your consciousness is. These little bubbles try to ascend up the, the vibrational continuum. And then you think where you want to appear and you're there. It's like an over unity machine, like, which is all we are already. Is these implosive fields like becoming, oh, oh my gosh. The desire to see creates the eyes. The desire to hear creates the ears. And all that can be heard. You are God creating this reality with your mind. Coming up to this consciousness of how things are, how they actually work, theories that are universal man this this grand unifying theory so that we can understand nature and what we are and our relationship with it that we are one not just conceptually but really that we are creating it this is where we're at now this is what this time is all about and the the it's what we make of it we can we can make this the like so we're in the darkest part of the Kali Yuga, like 12 midnight. Well, that's not the darkest part. It might be 2 o'clock in the morning or something. Uh, anyway, we're coming towards the dawn again. It's gone past getting darker and darker. So it's going to be infinitely easier to achieve what you want if it's in line with unconditional love and service and empowering others. It's going to be easier than it's ever been before because it's always been about that. But now it's like, that's just the, the season of consciousness. You have the Kali Yuga, the degenerative cycle where everyone forgets the way out of suffering and is a mess. And like, you get one Buddha who's like, oh, fuck. The Buddha means someone who works the way out of suffering when everyone else is forgotten. Then he's like, okay, okay, there is suffering, first noble truth. There is the cause of uh, 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 suffering. There is the path of uh, that uh, there's the suffering, there's the path that leads to suffering, there's the path that leads out of suffering, and there's the truth of walking out of suffering. I think I got the second one wrong. But basically, there is the Dharma is the way out of suffering. And when being this Dharma, this ultimate reality, uh, very difficult to understand, takes a long, long time to understand what that means. Like, um, when we understand that again, then we get into the harmonic ages, the golden ages. Uh, the, the things get warmer, we turn towards the sun, the flower, the leaves and the blossoms and things come and, and all this lovely smelly things. That does not exist without the degenerative cycle. You do not get regeneration without degeneration. You do not get life without death. We're in this dualistic plane. So ultimately we're going beyond the good and the bad and the life and the death into just the pure awareness that is the non-dual primal element behind everything into the emptiness, Nibbana, the final goal of, of the Buddha is to get beings to the peace in the deepest part of our heart we long for peace. Well it doesn't really matter if you're in a whatever world you're in when you got that peace you see the total perfection of everything, the divine love, the absolute perfection the perfect perfect love that everything is just how it is like not a hair out of place and we can then enjoy it when we're a bit more let go and not so like holding on holding on and making it hard for ourselves and others uh falling into the falling in love with it falling into the into the uh into the confusion uh, into the ignorance. So the education is the thing. So at Green Camp, we're doing all these workshops. We've got meditation every day, yoga, uh, just trying to connect ourselves to our bodies. We're learning about how to work with nature. We've got all this technological side, the physics, our book, Virtual Photons and Electromagnetism, which gives a heretofore absent definition of energy, a physical definition using quantum electrodynamics theory, which is the most advanced physical theory that we have. World Preservation Foundation, we're developing all these environmental reports on what is the most ecological way to live, which unequivocally and most importantly is to live in a plant-based way for our personal and planetary health. But I'm a, I'm a type A 
blood type. And it's like, well, so is this cow. But you don't see him chowing down on his buddies. You don't, do you? You definitely don't. Okay, I think I may have reached level two, according to Master Ching Hai, which is why I'm... <laughs> I'm not gonna say it. Okay, arrogant. I think I've, I have because of my own arrogance. But anyway, um, get your Kuan Yin method on if you want to be getting really deep ass and two and a half hours of meditation a day and light and sound meditation where you hear the inner sound and it's just like, <gasps> Oh my god, that's the deepest bass line ever. Everything is dancing to it silently, ever loudly. Oh my god, oh, just... So, uh, Kuan Yin Method, Master Ching Hai, there's, they're there for you, these teachers, these lineages, back to the ones who remembered when all others forgot. And maybe from other world cycles are coming down here now to really help us, which may be the ch case with Master Ching Hai. Um, I don't really know how it works in terms of that, lots of different beliefs, but you don't need to change your belief structure to practice these things. It's all about being with what is actually in your body and just being honest about it. Um, Simples. Okay, I don't think I know anything else to say. I think that's everything I know. And until the next time, I'm gonna be in London, going to Morning Glory Bell for a huge dance. We're having a big cuddle puddle at my house in Battersea. Then down to the Green Camp for supper club on the 6th, the drum circle, and the dance class, and the um, uh, movie nights. Gar! It is a pirate's life for me. Going to quickly through the speed trap. And um, yeah, thanks very much for just. Uh, I'm, uh, but I'm my only uh, customer who watches these videos most of the time. I watch myself over and over. I'm such a conceited bastard talking to my own reflection. Oh dear. Okay. Um, oh god, I should save your time. Sorry, I know time is precious. But these are the most precious things I've ever found. And I have such good fortune that my mum and my family are like... Well, my stepfather is like... I hate you, but my mum is like, okay, you know, well, I'm unemployable anyway, I can't get a job of any other kind, because I will say what I feel, and be like, I will, I love the NASA engineers I work with, okay, so, uh, Sebastian uh, designed the, um, come on, more stories, it's story time, uh, Sebastian, um, uh, uh, ex-NASA engineer worked on the Jupiter second, not Galileo, the one after Galileo, the, so Galileo went to Jupiter, took the first pictures of Jupiter, everyone was like, you guys are the shit. He designed the um, uh, guidance systems, hyperbolic interstellar physics. So you got a, uh, a sensor looking at a star over there and a sensor looking at a star over there, and they have to, with trigonometry, work out that they're going towards Jupiter. Because if you're one degree off, or thousands of a degree, you will literally miss Jupiter by a million miles. And then they have to catapult it around Mars and the moon and, and get the speed up so that they can put you out there. So when Sebastian's not doing interstellar hyperbolic physics, he's doing Otis T cars, neutron accumulator, which was the power, like resonant cavity, because um, uh, the power is actually the ionosphere for these craft. The power isn't on board, it's the wireless transmission system, so we could have an ECAT sending wireless transmission and be all electrostatically levitating from here to any other point in the universe. Bo! Oh my goodness. Okay, and um, along the string pearl, check out the thunderbolts.info, the electric model of the universe, gravitational model of the universe, essentially a physical prism for your mind so that you don't know what's possible and you're not a threat at all. You are neutered. You are a little whinging. <laughs> eh! <laughs> oh my, I'm sorry, but like, it, I just don't have. Okay. And, uh, yeah, so, physical models, blah, 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 blah. Uh, the mathematics is at the base of the civilization. And, uh, yeah, if you try and learn about the hexadecimal system or hexadecimal system, uh, but it's, uh, or, it's, you can't find anything on it, even though it's like the base of 60 minutes in an hour, 360 degrees in a circle, like Nikola Tesla said, you understand the power of 3, 6, and 9, you have the power to control the whole universe. Why is he saying stuff like that? Check out 
um, our foundation's website, the Foundation for Common Good, FFCG with hyphens in between, dot org, uh, forward slash market hyphen harmony. And we can start to do a resource based economy based on the understanding of what's going on. Prince Charles's guys are doing all that true cost accounting and they're having big conferences on it with their sustainable food conference. It's happening and they're way on it. So we're going to get the community participatory method at the heart of this green camp working in Morocco, getting a loan for them so that the 300 communities working it can. Um, can uh, uh, we can buy the produce off them and then sell it to Apo Soya's new organic uh, almond factory and a few other uh, distributors because the demand for almonds and walnuts is going through. We're going to get loads of money, loads of money, and then buy lands and I'll put it in everyone's name. Actually, I'll give it to the cooperative. I think. Yeah, okay, you need this and this, I feel, because you need a, a, a supreme authority for the principle of harmlessness. So you give one group that, and then, oh fuck, I don't, I, I, I just give it to this cooperative in perpetuity, that's the point. But give is, is, is already playing into the idea that it belongs to them. You, they have uh, permission to govern the land in perpetuity, and the landowner gives that, so he's kind of like the landowner, but he's given it away to someone else in perpetuity. So it's kind of now in this equation where it can't be taken out of that, which is great because you don't want it to get taken out of that. But everything eventually will fall apart. The earth will be burnt away till not even an ash remains. So much more important than any of that is know your unconditioned essence, eternal, imperishable, pure awareness, and that's the Dharma. And if you practice that, all this comes to being. This is just keeping the precepts for harmlessness. And I don't want to just, you know, ride this road that's hurting everything. What am I going to do? I don't want to hurt other people. The Buddha says don't hurt other people. Jesus says other, don't hurt other people. My heart says don't other hurt other people. So what do I do? I'm going to try and find another way of doing it. And that's what's come about from trying to do that. So check it out. We'll be harvesting asteroids with our space balloons. And um, yeah, having a lot of fun. So, great success, great success. Haven't got any money, but I got a lot of everything else. In fact, I think I have all the money in the universe. It's just, so all energy is free, when you understand the theory of asymmetric electrical systems and quantum vacuum energy extraction. It's just about energy management. So, uh, all energy is free, right? We're just managing energy into these over-unity systems, into these self-renewing fertilities. So I dropped the energy stuff to go back to communities working in cooperatives with nature, making these tree nurseries and a million trees in, in Morocco. And now we're importing that model into um, the UK with Green Camp. But we can't just have a tree nursery in a food forest because that's not really going to subsidize people's lives as they are used to it here very much, maybe a family or two. So an ECAT making a whole load of power, that's a good green asset for the community cooperative that's in charge of the land under principles of harmlessness. Then you've got uh, a hydroponic veg production system. It's all on the business plan that I prepared for James Cameron and those guys making Avatar, originally calling it Navi Camp. But with the Green Camp, we can work with Bali Green School, who we're in chats with, and their three frame day learning model, which is all about fun, because fun is the best way to make learning happen. And then we can uh, run a thematic, so we can do an Avatar thematic. If we get good at it, we can have Green School, Green Business Park, and Green Village all coming out at a green campus. Oh my goodness. Okay, it's too fun not to try. And we have drum circles that were so good last night. And we had movie night that's so good. And my mum was like, ah ha 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 ha! She's loving herself. Okay, so it can't be wrong, man. It can't be wrong. Little Eve is gonna come and it's gonna play at the kids' day where we're all charging up the crystal cells in the crystal kingdom, washing all the ghouls in the woods, and Halloween is when the kids' day is. We're gonna wash them of all their sadness and confusion that makes them all, all, all angry, and we're gonna be chibanging the gongs and singing the songs and the um. Uh, 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 washing them of all their sadness and confusion so they feel loved again they feel their heart and they come and join us in the meditation charging the crystal the crystals in the crystal kingdom that keeps it such a harmonious place and the kids can learn the Dhamma and we can earn the good merit and you watched like Ned Ned who started Virgin Galactic he's a brother Kate Winslet his wife hopefully Lem and Little Bear will be there Eleanor Gates is amazing uh, uh, actress who, who's in Alice in Wonderland was there at the drum circle 
Uh, she's uh, uh, gonna help us with the Tesla movie when she's in LA. Uh, uh, George Duffield's wife, who made End of the Line, the film about the the, uh, the fishing crisis, what's going on with the uh, and running out of fish. She was there. Um, uh, and George Duffield's like investing in IMAX, is making all these IMAX movies. Um, anyway, so you can see it like brings around all these amazing beings and the Duchess of Norfolk and Prince Charles' sustainability unit. You know, all these guys are kind of like that. There's only ever a handful of people, but it's like that's all we need is handfuls of people all over the place. And there's just an infinite number of amazing divine people everywhere. Um, so I'd love to do is get the model worked out and then we can go to places and set it up So we'll go to Poland and uh, my mate there work with the local guys keep going back to Morocco and uh, um, South Africa I want to go back to the townships in South Africa um, Brazil I'm gonna try and get out to the Gaia education place and do the eco village design curriculum I'd love to host so we use the eco village design curriculum at the center of the camp every time you run the curriculum it's practical your your, your eco village is flourishing every time the experts are coming in to teach the different courses natural building food production by growing food forest so everything thrives and it's education centered and awareness oriented communities so green-camp.uk you can find out about that stuff foundation for common good is the foundation which is supporting it coming into being um it's a little update where, where we're at right now uh getting into london got, got a skedaddle okay yeah just send us emails if you've got any questions you want to join in just come and hang out the most valuable thing is to have people in the garden with that principle of ahimsa there's no more valuable asset in the ecosystem um so please do come and hang in the garden and, and help to create this example of thriving and producing everything we need as harmlessly and abundantly well not even as abundantly that's it's just as much as we need man. just like fun fun um yeah and i think that i can justify all the airships and stuff like that is because if we don't make some intermediary people will still keep driving around and stuff like that so if they have these little uh, pods that can take a lot of the weight off of cargo and um, you know emergency disaster relief that's a big thing and by this time that's working we'll be retrieving a lot of our mining stuff off world and um, I'm pretty sure the galactic family is sitting around like incarnating as us already um, but what I don't know I just know it's too fun not to try and it's so nice to have you all there thank you everybody for all your help uh, yeah, big in love, big in love, bye.